Leslie Kern, you are an author, but that's just one of your many hats. How do you describe what your job is? So I'm a, a professor of mm -hmm. urban and feminist geography at Mount Allison University in Sackville, New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. And how did you wind up in this position? What was the, the, the course of your career that led you to do this? Because it's not something that you go, oh yeah, I think that's on the list of what I'm going to become. How did you create the position that you're in? Sure. And then what does your work look like? Sure. Yeah. I had never heard of, you know, feminist geography when I was an no. undergraduate student. In fact, I never took a geography course in my undergraduate. But one of the things that I did major in was women's studies. So I was a feminist from an early age and uh, also someone who loved living in the city. I grew up in Toronto, uh, went to school there, and I always felt this like real connection to the city. And I really felt a strong sense of, you know, liberation and, and fun in the city even though it didn't always feel as safe as I might want it to. Uh, so I did my PhD in women's studies at York University. And one of the things that I looked at there for my dissertation research was condominium development in Toronto. So in the early uh -huh. 2000s, late 90s, condos were like booming across the city. And I noticed these little news stories that were like, condos are going to be so great for women. Condos will like emancipate women from the suburban patriarchal home. And as a feminist, I'm always like a little bit wary of those sort of easy stories of, oh, this is the thing that will emancipate women. So I got really <laughs> interested in like why condos were being marketed this way. Yeah. And in fact, what how women experience them. So I interviewed women who were condo owners about, you know, why they chose to do this, what it meant in their life, what their lives were like, uh, to talk about the ways in which some of these urban development agendas were connected to gender. So through that, even though I, I, I wasn't technically a geographer, I had to become versed in urban politics, urban design, urban planning. So I kind of meshed the women's studies and the geography together and then discovered that, lo and behold, there is a whole field of feminist geography. Um, and eventually, you know, after I graduated with my PhD, I, I got a position at Mount Allison University, and I've been there for about 10 years. Okay, so you're a professor, but now you're also, uh, yes, you would lecture in the classroom, but you're also out speaking to groups, you're writing books, uh, you're on book promotion tours. So what does your job now look like? Uh, you've got responsibilities at the university, but you're also, you know, expanding mm -hmm. your reach, amplifying your voice. Absolutely. So certainly uh, Feminist City was written to be accessible to a much more wide audience than an academic audience of people who already know what geography is or already know what feminism is or already know what these issues are. So yeah, it means that I'm, I'm speaking to more diverse groups of people, not just students or my fellow academics. I'm hoping that some of these messages resonate with people who are in positions of power and and who, who have some influence over things like urban design, transportation, parks, public space. Safety. Safety, <laughs> yes. yes, exactly. Um, in order to, you know, widen that conversation. So what does a typical day look like for you these days? It's it's a real combination of things. So I, I as, as you say, I have my teaching, I go into the classroom, I do my, my lecturing in, in geography. I might have a call for a podcast, right? And do a radio interview or something that's talking about the book. And then as you say, right now I'm doing uh, touring. So I've been to Toronto here in Vancouver, going to Calgary and Halifax as well. And over the next year, um, the book is gonna be published in some different languages. So I'm gonna be traveling internationally as well. When you are putting together your uh, lesson plans and whatnot, or what, what you're gonna be presenting in class, what kind of work do you have to go through to, to put that together? Yeah, Cause, so... Because these jobs are complex. It's not just, okay, yeah, I'm gonna go do that. You have to be prepared when you walk in there. For sure. So I teach um, a first year course at Mount Allison. It's called uh, The Human Environment. It's like the introduction to human geography. So in that course, we're really trying to get students to like think like a geographer. What does it mean to take space into account or to recognize that place matters? Uh -huh. So we talk about all sorts of huge topics from migration, globalization, urbanization. We talk about um, wow. politics, indigenous people in Canada. We talk about uh, climate change. So that is a course where one of the things that I try to do is to stay connected to what's going on 
in terms of current events. And I'll show the students a news clipping mm -hmm. in class every day. It may, might be about like the refugee crisis, for example, or um, migrant caravans coming up to the U.S. And I say, okay, when we read this headline, when we look at this news story, what do we need to know that's behind the story? And what does a geographic perspective bring to our understanding of that? Mm -hmm. As you're talking, I realize, yes, you, you speak to a class, but then, then you also have the uh, the one-on-one -on -one interpersonal connection that with each of those students. Are there a particular kind of skill set that you have to bring to that to uh, dance your way through the fact that every single one of those students is an individual? Of course. Mm -hmm. So I really try to emphasize a lot of compassion and care in my teaching in that a student is in my classroom, but you know what? My class might not be the most important thing going on in their life right now. In fact, it probably isn't as much as they might hopefully enjoy the class. And that when they come to me, I don't know what's going on at home. I don't know what struggles they face. I don't know if they have a part-time job, if they have a mental health issue. Um, and so I, I try to be really open to that. And it, it does involve a lot of work, right? You, you want to make sure that you are being fair to an entire class, but that you're also respecting students as individuals mm -hmm. and recognizing um, a little bit of what they might be going through. So I, I try to approach each student with a lot of openness, recognizing I don't know your life, um, and, and I want to make sure that you can succeed in this class in a way that's meaningful for you. So in a classroom, I'm just thinking about this from the perspective of you are helping others realize their potential through learning. And, and I think of the university experience as being more heuristic, uh, you know, self-learning, self-guided to, to a certain extent, rather than being, I'm going to help walk, help walk you through this. You have to, to find your way. But you have to, you, from your side of the equation, have to find that that element that's going to ignite their imagination or their curiosity that says, yes, I want to know more about this. Do you find yourself constantly saying, ah, here's something that I think will be a value that can really get the students, you know, psyched up about what I, what I think is important? Yes, and I'm constantly on the lookout for everything from YouTube videos to memes to tweets to something that will sort of be relevant to students today who, you know, I keep getting older, but they keep staying the same age. So, you know, I have to think, well, what is a 20-year-old oh, yeah, um, into today? What did they likely look at on their computer this morning that might be of interest to them? So I do try to connect to things that we all sort of experience. So in that intro human geography course, we talk a lot about food, right? Food is something we all have to eat every day. Um, and we all make choices around food, but we can ask a lot of questions that connect to these broad geographical issues, like who picked your food? How did it get here? How is the food that we eat uh, connected to climate change? Um, how is our food system connected to globalization? And I find students really respond well to that because it gives them something to literally like chew on in their everyday life when they leave class and they go to meal hall and they think, oh, what am I going to eat today? So apparently the only thing that you do more often than eat is breathe. Right. It, that's how important it is to us. Mm -hmm. uh, it, mm -hmm. Like it's extraordinary. So if somebody's looking at this right now going, hmm, well, Leslie, I want to be you in the future. What would you suggest to them uh, be some of those early mm, educational or career choices that would help them? Sure. Well, the, the track into academia as a professor, it's not just about teaching. Teaching is maybe like 40% of our job. So the other big chunk of it is research, mm -hmm. right? So this is where um, each academic kind of has their own specialization. So I would say that if you are someone who is sort of passionately curious about a particular topic, everything from, you know, I don't know, uh, new antibiotics that we might develop to urban planning, that you're going to have to cultivate a strong interest in that that's going to sustain you over a career. So of course, we might change our interests and they, they develop and grow over time. But essentially, uh, you, you have to be able to really see yourself digging into these kinds of topics over and over and over again, working very independently a lot of the time. So if, if something during your education sparks that interest and you want to keep cultivating it, then this, this might be a path for you. Curiosity, determination, yes. commitment, all of these are very important things. And I think that when you have a career like yours that does matter, that, that is uh, one of the base, uh, or those are the base characteristics that uh, 
that everybody has to have. Thank yes. you for sharing your, your career path with us and the important work that you do. Thank you for letting me share with you. Appreciate it.